Hello, and welcome to AFAC CMO Dialogues. Today, we have with us Kunal Dubey, CMO ClearTrip, a marketer with over 18 years of experience. He has worked on brands such as Flipkart, eBay, PhonePay, uh, Vedantu, uh, a lot of digital uh, native brands. Uh, in his second stint with Flipkart Group, he heads marketing for the online travel aggregator. Welcome, Kunal. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sushmita. Nice to connect with you again. Pleasure. So, Kunal, I, I want to pick your brains on all things marketing. You have had a uh, um, deep involvement with uh, digital brands. You've built them, um, especially, you know, um, a, a long stint with Flipkart and eBay, both e-commerce brands. And once again, you know, um, an online travel aggregator now. So I want you to start with um, identifying three, four core things that have po possibly changed in the last five, seven years. This, when you were working on, say, a Flipkart, you know, um, in the early, um, you know, 2014 to 2017, that period. And now when you look at an e-commerce brand and how to establish it, what are things that have changed? Yeah, thanks for that, right? See, I think... Uh... The benefit is because I've been associated with the, uh, out of the 18 years, right, uh, with the internet marketing ecosystem or the startup ecosystem, right, from 2012 onwards. So it's been over a decade in that sphere itself. That has at least taught me the agility because the when I started, uh, Facebook and Twitter were just new in India, brand new in India in 2010, 11 when they started, right? And I was fortunate enough to be at the marketing table at least, uh, learning when they were coming in, in early days when Facebook and Twitter just had launched in the country. And even those uh, stacks were changing every six, seven months. So uh, I think uh, fortunately for me, um, because things have been changing so fast and adaptability to the changing environment has worked in me and my learning curve as well. So uh, any new changes that comes in and the technologies, marketing landscape, uh, how marketers, I used to be back then and what I'm today, uh, there are two different people itself, right? And I think uh, nothing is good or bad for me. I think staying true to the current times is what really matters, right? What is needed today and what skills you need to develop to be in that ecosystem that really matters. Few things like, uh, see, in the every uh, marketing function that evolves, right? Um, be it on the brand side, be it consumer research, uh, be it the media part of it, be it the performance marketing. I think they all have evolved uh, to a different levels itself in today's time. Um, earlier, for example, the biggest learning for me has been um, earlier, while at least in uh, 15, 16, 17, just a few years back, right? Not too much back in when I was in Flipkart earlier. While uh, the digital media had started ramping up in terms of programmatic advertising, cohorting, personalizations, those were the buzzwords in those times. I think today's time, um, marketing, uh, keeping the from the top of funnel to the bottom funnel, how do you target a single user using the full stack? That has become very relevant. For example, uh, when we do any campaigns now, uh, the first step always becomes through prospecting the users where they are, to reaching out with their messages through a, a brand campaign or a you know brand media spends all of that across. And when you know those audiences, and then you target those audiences who have already interacted with you through a remarketing channel or through a CRM channel. So how do you um, keep the marketing stack ready on a single user across your channels? I think the technology stacks for this have evolved a lot better today than it was earlier. Uh, that has been our biggest learning and staying true to how they are right now. Um, in terms of analytics and reporting of marketing campaigns, uh, there used to be a little lag earlier. Now it's all real time. So the ability to pivot, if need be, is much more easier to be agile, right? Agility from a marketing mind perspective was there. But I think ability to take decisions right now in your marketing frameworks or campaigns that you do is much more faster right now. That's what you can do. It has been the second biggest learning that it become a ally in the whole marketing world. And I think lastly, with the whole AI thing that has come up in recently, and that is something also, I'm also learning deeply on those fronts, how it is aiding in researches, uh, in the brainstorming sessions, thinking, uh, I think th that is, or how do you just develop the campaigns on those fronts, uh, how things are becoming much more faster on those accounts as well. Uh, I think we are still touching the surface of it. I think everybody is. Uh, but I think exciting times right now, and by the time we learn it, we don't know what's going to come up next, right? idea is uh, to just keep eyes and ears in the market very, very sharply. Um, be open always to learn new things as they come along. Uh, no, not to be a naysayer, 
oh, it's a fat, it'll go away. It can be a fat, it's fine. But even if it helps you in the six to eight months period, in today's time, that, that is very, very critical still. Got it. So you mentioned, you know, technology and performance and retargeting, all of that. And I'm guessing that for an e-commerce brand, this is extremely crucial. But I also remember when Flipkart was doing all of its, you know, brand marketing, the kidults are remembered to this day. And even ClearTrip brought the kidults back last year. So for an e-commerce brand, how do you, um, you know, prioritize brand marketing versus performance marketing because performance marketing helps you because you have those numbers. You can, you know, go back to that customer. Like you said, you can track that customer, make sure they come back to you. All of that is possible. So measurement itself, I think, makes performance marketing that much more a useful tool for marketers uh, today. So how do you prioritize these and is performance marketing um, where you park a lot of your marketing spends? See, that's what I mentioned earlier, Sumita, right? See, uh, that is what used to happen in like three, four years down the line before that, right? Today, when you're using in a single funnel and you're combining both, see, uh, because for any marketer, they'll understand that performance marketing in your PL comes above your CM, right? And brand marketing comes below CM spends on all that. And people are looking at it in silos as different objectives. Um, I still believe for consumer, the way consumer sees is an ad, an impression that is served to them is an impression. Whether it's been served through a performance marketing ad or through a brand, for the consumer, it's the same communication from a brand. And what if consumers right. never thinking, oh, there's a performance marketing ad being served to me, or there's a brand marketing ad served to me. So when you start thinking from a consumer lens from that part and see what is the best way to fill the objective in a single line. So when we have to divide, we don't divide keeping in mind that oh, this much budget, I need to park it performing versus brand. I think objectives yeah. of move, movement is clear. And because now the tracking is possible, even the brand marketing spends to the T, right? Yeah. Which is the tax are evolving from that perspective. So um, for top and mid funnel, we completely use brand marketing from that perspective, which is finding out the new audiences cohort wise. It can be your 1P data. It can be your 3P data from that perspective, reaching out to them, telling what you have to offer in a storytelling format and all that, getting them to develop interest for the brand. And the cohort that get interest for the brand performance marketing kicks on that base itself to try and convert them into the last mile objective, right? Uh, because we still, and if you, uh, it, you'll be very surprised to know that the assets that we use with little tweaks and all that, they are same for brand and performance because their core fundamental belief as a marketer has been for a user, it doesn't matter. They are not thinking, oh, there's right. a performance marketing team serving me an ad. So I'll be transactional, I'll click it to make a purchase. Oh, now brand marketing, I have to only watch and see. That doesn't happen to the user. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, for them, it's about brand offering me something that I need and is useful to me. Uh, the CTA changes in terms of behavior that I want to do that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I want them to view, view more and engage more. Performance marketing uh, will be developed towards action more. Action can happen till you create a desire. So it has to be, for example, if a user has to be served a frequency of 15 in a campaign, mm -hmm. the first eight, nine has to be through a brand. The last has to be through performance because Objectives are changing Got for the it. user. Now you have, you know what, my, what I'm offering. You have developed certain interests on it. Now I'm reaching out with a different objective of the same creative. So the notion of uh, this is performing, this is brand. Um, in the last two years, I have stopped operating that way. I used to operate, of course. That's Fantastic. how the world was and okay. that's how I learned. Uh, today, uh, in our PNL, the way we set up a campaign, the way we discuss our marketing strategies, we don't look at that. We look at the cohorts, which course to go after. Uh, then mm -hmm. we look at the full funnel marketing from that perspective. And then when this is the campaigns on all of that in the same frequency buckets or what action do we need to desire from the user at what stage and that channel kicks in at that moment. So I think uh, this strategy has been working well for us so far, uh, being frugal and still being impactful. So I think, yes, uh, no complaints so far. It's working for us so far, yes. Is always, you know, investments into brand marketing are, are seen as an expenditure and the conversation um, within uh, a company um, between, you know, the CMO, CEO and the CFO uh, is always about, you know, what ROI is all of this money bringing really. And you can tell us because uh, I, I remember uh, during your time at Flipkart, I mean, especially I think the big billion day sale, there was this whole, um, you know, I think um, like some 10 odd celebrities or more. 40 were there. Plus. 40 plus, okay. So 40 plus celebrities in one campaign. So how do you um, 
think that the CFO's outlook towards advertising has also evolved with time. Um, is the CFO sympathetic, as sympathetic as you would want the CFO to be, not specific, um, you know, to clear trip, but in general, um, how have conversations evolved? Um, see, I've been very fortunate on that friend um, because at least I can talk about right now at the very use case because uh, one of my most closest people in my team in clear trip is my CFO. Uh, there's a joke on the floor where people call us the power couples. Uh, right, uh, just like any other celebrity couples or power couples and all that. So that's what we are joked into in that perspective. See, because in the end, uh, once a marketer, and I would uh, put this little more pressure on the marketers in the market, uh, because the whole thing of about that, marketers believe their charter about as somebody that I want to spend something to gain growth, right? Uh, I've seen a lot of people whom I interview also, they ask the first thing as, what's the budget for marketing before I come in? Uh, the moment that notion stays of that, right, that I have come here to spend, then you're looked as a cost center. If your alignment is clear, uh, not just with CFO, with the entire strategy team uh, or all these CXOs or people down below, that we all have come together here for only one pur purpose, which is to take the brand forward, right? And brand doesn't mean advertising. Mm -hmm. Every touch point uh, is every impression that the brand serves in the market is a touch point for the brand. Uh, every call to a CX team is a brand impression. Every time you come to my website is an impression of the brand. Every time you see my post on my LinkedIn, uh, which is an employer communication, is a brand, right? Every time you interact with my brand anywhere, even the printout that you get or a ticket that you get after you book a flight, that is a brand impression. So every impression that you serve is an opportunity for a brand marketer to be relevant in the user's life. And there's an, uh, another opportunity to grow the brand from any perspective, right? The moment you have aligned to the ethos that this is what my realities are in my current ecosystem, mm -hmm. these are the resources available, and this is the vision to grow, a marketer and CFO can do a bloodbath in a room before the strategy is developed. Once you align on the reality mm -hmm. that this is what my resources are. Almost two decade experience, you know, that you have behind you and 40 celebrities, I mean, you just spoke about that campaign. Is there anything, a memorable campaign from these 18 years that comes to mind when, when you think about, you know, ah, that was, that was something cool I worked on. Um, see, I'll talk about a couple of them, right? Um, one definitely was, uh, the flip cards first time big billion days when we pivoted to the whole madness of how, because it was not just signing a 40 celeb. It was for me, um, a new playbook of marketing in the market. Mm. Uh, before that, uh, I had never imagined you can do a campaign of three weeks with uh, 200 plus films in a one campaign where you have 40 different faces. Uh, media plan was a maddening in that front. Um, we were taught marketing very differently as I was growing up. Mm. Uh, but I, there was some belief and some hypothesis that I thought this might work, this might work, just to write a new playbook in the market. And after that, I've seen many, many, many brands, even offline brands who have mm. attended a similar playbook. So that gave me a lot of uh, satisfaction, so to say. A new playbook coming into the market and then being adopted widely, right? Mm. Uh, gave me a lot of satisfaction. But from a brand book perspective, I think uh, the last three years in Clear Trip has given me a lot of satisfaction also because, see, I, in the last few four or five years, I have got deeply into the um, this whole change of when the budgets are limited, when, when the life is frugal and all that. Mm. Uh, more often than not, the power of insights makes those shapes how the brand is operating, right? Uh, and yeah. I have become a lot more sucker for the not starting any work if the insights are not powerful, yeah. correct? Uh, uh, you can have a creative device like Kiddles, a very, very yeah. widely accepted love device, right? But today, when your monies are limited, insight cuts through more than a creative device is what I firmly believe in. Which is why when I came to Clear Trip, I think when we redefine the whole brand narrative of Clear Trip overall at a strategy level, when we mm -hmm. rebranded Clear Trip as Clear Trip 2.2 and the new logo came in and all that. Mm -hmm. Principally, the whole strategy was based on one inside line. And that was that in India, we do travel, but we don't travel. Mm -hmm. In India, we talk a lot about travel, but we don't travel. Yeah. Correct? It, this is an inside. You and me in all our functions, all our friends together, only topic is where to go, what to do. We, have, we are working only. We don't take time off. We talk a lot about travel, but then we actually travel. Mm -hmm. And why do we do this then? This is where the inciting work starts because there are some fears or there is some procrastinations or certain anxieties that came into play. That is a devil. 
That mm-hmm. means the role of the brand is very clear to address the devil. Now everything around it, whatever you develop, has to be on this core principle. Like one idea, mm-hmm. uh, very very uh, from a budget perspective, very small campaign, but in terms of ROI, was one of the best performing in the last three years. One we did with Biswa, a campaign on passport mm-hmm. for an international campaign. Right. Our insight there was that in India, uh, or not India, passport is supposed to be a travel document. But specifically in India, it has become a government ID proof. Imagine right. you were born to be travel the globe, and now you become only for rent agreements or to do something. You become an ID proof. How does a passport feel? Can you talk about that story? Now, the moment you do that, I think, and we use Viswa as a lead actor on this one, and his delivery performance and all that. I think with the similar ones, spending less on it, the results we got was one of the best we have seen in the last few years in terms of pure ROI. I believe this was purely because the insight was very strong. Mm-hmm. You have a strong insight at the table. Like in Creative, then we did one thing uh, inside of about that in first our own BBD that we did, Big Billion Days that we did on Clear Trip, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And we went against e-commerce. There we spoke about that money in your pocket is limited, right? Yeah. Uh, you're not getting an extra money to do more. And everybody's trying to get you to shop more. We said that, boss, I know everybody's shouting offers to you. Every brand gets activated in Diwali time. We just told the users, guess what? Your money is limited. Money is not growing, correct? Everybody is trying to do something. You decide whether you want to spend on another jeans, which you will not, might mm-hmm. not wear, or another shoes that you may, or one or two times you'll wear, or you want to travel in that money. There is a lifetime memory. Right. Just I remember this. This was there. got it. That so you mentioned Biswa, and you know that triggers a, a certain question. Is um, I mean, for a lot of brands, especially D two C brands, e commerce brands, you've seen them all embrace content in some way or the other with collaborations with um, either influencers or integrations in content, um, etc. But we haven't seen much of that coming from Clear Trip. Is that because you you don't see value in content integrations? Um, what is your uh, opinion and view on? Uh, branded content and using that for marketing. Uh, see, I am a very staunch believer of content marketing. Number one, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I also believe so. Why? What we do right now is a very base level of integration with the influencers to uh, give a lead to a campaign work right now. But mm-hmm. the work that I've done in the part, which I call as a charter of a brand love, mm-hmm. where brand love charter can also be evolved either into uh, the storytelling that you do from your own side. For example, one of the work that we did in Flipkart was the Penguin Dad narrative we had done. That, mm. you know, Penguin, I don't know if you remember, you should Google the Penguin Dad as a campaign, right? Okay. Very interesting uh, content uh, content piece um, that we had done at that time. Penguin is the only species where the male goes, uh, stays at home to take care of the baby and the female species goes out to hunt the food. Right. And right. in today's time, dads are more involved with their kids than ever before. Uh, okay. Think about your father or your husband right now, different mm. levels of involvement with the children's, right? So, and I believe was... Flipkart, I believe at that time, our narrative was Nay India gets up. This is the new India. Penguin, that is okay. the new India. So I'm saying, for me, that is still a content. So I'm a strong believer in the content mm-hmm. marketing. It can happen it, when you do it on your own side or you mm-hmm. rope in somebody else and do that. I have done a lot of content like uh, with singers, with this one, all my life. I think uh, it is just about the right time and the right idea that comes into it rather than post fitting mm-hmm. into it. Correct? Mm-hmm. Right now, uh, the objectives that I've been leading for clear trip from a marketing standpoint um mm-hmm. this we are still uh while we are number two right now but i think we have a miles to go in terms of building the hardcore concentration and being the uh the preferred destination that mm-hmm. my default the obvious choice on that part so i think with what the resources are available i think i want to do a much more harder work on that at any point in time uh still at least i spend three four hours in a week talking to all the publishers in the market all the content creators of different stages in the market just to see where it comes from there as in when I convinced that this is the thing to go, I'll be on it. That's the reason at least I spend my time still with the content creators. Media property like IPL makes sense to you. Is So often we see a lot of um, brands that um, look for you know app downloads, invest a lot on a media property like IPL because they get that exposure for a couple of months and then a you know, sudden spike in app downloads maybe. Uh, but for a... Uh, online travel aggregator in your category does it make much sense to you um if you can uh, speak on that uh see i have a li- little different lens to it uh sushmita um mm-hmm. uh, ipl i i, I am very fortunate as a marketer in today's time because now you have two big periods to market your product 
one is a ipl time one is a diwali time right these are the two times uh, when everybody is online right um, and i think when the people are while people are online when i say online they are spending more time online per se than they usually do even an ipl is just not while people obviously the numbers are staggering in terms of what these broadcasters get but even at that time people go to the news people go on the news uh, on different news platform on entertainment to see the bites to see reels on the bites everything memes get activated in ipl like never before people enjoy memes of ipl and the cricketers much more than i would like to believe what's happening on the ground as well right so the way i look at it is an opportunity market here uh, mm-hmm. i'm saying it's a purpose number one a you should be active always mm-hmm. uh doesn't necessary to be present on the ipl slots itself if you don't have don't you should not be this thing oh i don't have money on ipl so i can't progress my brand i don't echo that thoughts of a marketer at all mm-hmm. if people are online they're spending more times of online focus on what you want to take your brand narrative as if the conversation is cricket mm-hmm. if the conversation is all online happening of certain nature what is an idea that you're marrying your brand ethos or your brand rtvs or your brand's proposition or your brand story with that whole thing ecosystem and you present to a market in the end the best mm-hmm. idea wins Mm-hmm. right in the last 4 5 years also of so many brands who have been launched in ipl you will remember two three only mm-hmm. that they spoke about and you will remember them a for the idea that they came up with so mm-hmm. media is not the answer to everything is what i'm saying media is important to maintain market share sob all the time but i'm saying at the principal level if you don't have the media monies mm-hmm. i still believe you can still be relevant to your own audience in that time because they are online mm mm-hmm. correct got there it. has to be a way to go out and talk to them there has to be a way to focus in some other manner to them there's a way to hack this uh, ipl jonas and as well so there are mm-hmm. multiple hacks there are multiple this one if you are if you have an interesting idea about the technology and all of that even if you, if in your budget it doesn't suit so you spoke about i mean you you made such a um, you know uh, beautiful remark there you said media is not everything and but, but my question to you is um, how do you but you you still do use both traditional and digital media so what is your ideal balance say you were you know launching a you know summer campaign like you are in the middle of right now um how do you prioritize your media spends across traditional and digital um, mediums yeah i would just uh, correct one thing and then i'll answer this question sushmita when i say uh, when i say media is not everything it doesn't mean media is not important if right. you have a great story to tell yeah if you're not going to take it to the masses or you're not going to talk to your relevant cohorts then you can keep it on a laptop and be happy <laughs> right uh, so obviously uh, media is important but not in terms of uh, when i said every i've seen a lot of marketers in the market who say oh if i can't do ipl i can't grow i'm addressing that mindset no got right it. Uh, so that was an answer to that one uh, moving forward how do i plan um, Steve, I believe, uh, and this has been believed uh, from last eight nine years now, and um, yet to be proven wrong properly on this one. If my brand is online, um, if I expect my users to behave online, to do their activities, bookings, be there is e-commerce, be it OTA, be it ad tech, whatever that is, right? Mm-hmm. If my brand is online, if my uh, servicing is online, if my fulfillment is online, right? All that is happening, right? Uh, that means I have to address that audience first. Mm. um and in full shape is the same kunal dubey who is uh views content or media on online mm. same kunal dubey goes on tv and watches maybe in a different format like i like to watch news on tv versus right. i like to watch everything else in otts for example on the online medium so i understand the behaviors little part here and all that but i'm saying as long as you're reaching out to so first step in the media planning that i always do uh, is identifying the right cohorts uh, for every campaign who are your, who are the people who are only browsing and not shopping with you who are the people who are regular shoppers with you who are the people who have uh, even just consumed your content online but have never come to you ever mm-hmm. people who are never even consumed any content to you and whose vtr on your 30 second ad is less than 7 seconds mm-hmm. who are your competition users for example if there are some signals of that for example who are the people of certain affinities in the market mm-hmm. so once you identify the right cohorts and the sizing of those cohorts your first step always is am i reaching out to those audiences at the right frequencies yes or no mm. if my objective of any category is being fulfilled at a certain platform i like to stay to that platform okay earlier um 8 years back 
there used to be a conversation of TV plus digital. Mm. For me, it's reversed now, which is digital plus TV. So have you experimented with connected TV yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think connected TV is a part of all our campaigns. Okay. I've been calling this in every time I speak, right? It's like being on TV without spending on TV. Exactly. Because for me, the size of the device matters. Mm. Because they, and there are two things on, on TV versus mobile. The behaviors are mobile you keep scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. On mm. TV, you're not scrolling or changing randomly. Mm. So connected TV in, in that environment works a lot better because A, uh, you are more attentive to what you're watching. It's a brilliant platform and it has been a part of all the work that become a default addition to every media plan of ours. Well, that's, but my question to you is while I mean there is the whole targeting bit and it's it's an analog of you know mobile marketing but on a big screen there is still the challenge of say how do you on a mobile phone you see an ad you can click to go to another app to buy and there is that conversion that can happen so quickly frictionless etc so is that something that you see as much of a challenge on tv or you feel that tv is for that big experience and that it will possibly just help with you know recall etc and you are not too um, concerned about not having that click to purchase or a very strong call to action in the sense of actually a direct conversion happening there. Like I said, uh, said in the beginning, right? Um, purchase intent is the bottom funnel objective. Mm -hmm. If on digital, if I'm if I'm marketing such as building top of funnel for my brand, mm -hmm. I have option of being on any device to build top of funnel. If mm. I go on traditional TV, at least it doesn't give me a real time ki how many people I've reached, mm. what is the audience list looks like, how mm. can I target the users on other platforms. Traditional TV never get the data. Connected TV at least gives you that. If my starting objective is building awareness and desire for the brand and my proposition, right? And objective is whether I have to be on this uh, device versus this device, and this has its benefits. So I operate on both, but this gives me all, all the benefits with data attached to it. So for that particular objective, CTV may work brilliantly. Second part, I don't know if you have noticed recently, CTV has also started because a lot of marketers demand this, what you just said yeah. of different objectives, right? I don't know if you have seen, at least they have started using a QR code as a default mechanism on, on, on their ads. Yeah. This is for an action for downloading mm -hmm. the app itself. I think it will take some time to shape the behavior where that becomes relevant. But I think at least thinking is going in the direction, even on CTV, mm -hmm. uh, for the objectives that I want to build in a full funnel, for a top and a mid funnel, I think CTV still works brilliantly for me. Mm -hmm. Bottom funnel on click, click where I want to get the action of them to click on something, come to my platform, make an action, all of that. I have I, that is not the objective I'm going on CTV for. You know, initially when you started out, you said that so many new technologies have come in. Every six months, there's something new. There's possibly something that's a fad, and a fad could still be useful. I mean, you don't have to write off a fad, um, but you still have to upskill to use whatever that is in trend right now. So my question to you is Gen AI is that big fad right now, but it doesn't seem like a fad because there's so much you can do with it. There are continuous, I mean, week on week, you see so many improvements on what you can do with generative AI across video, text, everything, right? Um, we here at AFAX also have been using a lot of Gen AI for small things. And it's so exciting to even just try out what is what is possible now. So my question to you um, is, what are your, I'm sure you're excited, but what are your big concerns or when do you think Gen AI is going to become an integral part of any marketing advertising um, brand campaign? I think uh, what you're saying, asking is absolutely right. Number one, AI is here for real, right? And it's definitely not a fad. But what I find it funny of a lot of marketers and product managers rushing to do, oh, I have something done something with AI. This rush to prove that I know about it and I've done something, I find it a little funny, mm. honestly. What you do with the technology is what will speak volumes, right? Uh, like in our category, everybody started, three, four products came into the market and everybody was doing the same thing through Gen AI what Google was already doing in the market. For yeah. example, in travel perspective, uh, trip planning, if you're traveling to Paris for seven days, 
you will go and go and ask uh, just try and make an itinerary for seven days you things to do in paris blah 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 then ai make made it better it told you ki ha same information you can go here you can go here you can go here that's what most ods started doing that we took a step back and we were wondering that google is already doing the job you are collecting that information and showing on your app why to do that because number one you are a fulfillment center as a booking platform hmm. correct if you are giving an inspiration of what to do there are you closing the loop with the user guess what seven days i am building a site for you i am making a plan to this is what you do you pay here you book this and it's and i will take care when you traveling Mm. If you can't do that, then pause. No, just out of excitement to do something. A new technology has come in. It's okay to pause. It's okay to reflect, see, learn. What is the user user is looking for? How can mm. you add a value to a user? Because user gets it. If you are doing not doing something which adds a value to a user, they will come to you. Was oh you have done something? Oh, it's okay, fine. Not relevant anymore. Mm. So that's a larger on because it's real, but not rush into it either on a marketing side and all of this side. I think the opportunity in the marketing side, and I'm think five to six months down the line, half of the work on the campaign side uh, will be. See, we have started already doing the uh, mood boarding on every campaign through AI. Yeah. When we think of an idea, uh, the team goes on the AI and all that, try to put a mood board, and when it comes alive, and we keep changing and to see what is happening, not happening. Mm-hmm. As a personally, what I have done, like I have always struggled to give feedback to music directors on campaigns. Mm. I don't understand music. So I don't understand different between a, a a tone versus instrument versus a pitch versus a decibel. I struggled a lot. Mm. Now through AI, pro- giving a prompt command because I've taken some time to learn prompt engineering right now. Mm. I at least know the genre that I want to operate in and what is in my mind. Okay. So I can go through an AI tools, give mm. the prompt, work hard on it, identify. Okay, this is what I mean, and pass it on to the guys. Something, uh, things like that. When I struggled a lot, it is becoming relevant even more. The kind of video assets are being made right now through AI. Mm. Uh, we have started using it a little bit here and there, but I think the a lot of the assets that you create using these tools, right? Mm. Uh, I think, but people have to upskill themselves in terms of number one is prompt engineering because people yeah. think I can type anything and the magic will happen. The magic will happen to the person who understands what to give the input. Right. Yes. The output depends upon who is the person. The, the upskilling of who is the best prompt engineer. Within a marketing domain, who understands what output I need, and hence the best of people you'll find in the market now who are the best at prompt engineering, right? Uh, and that's where I spend that time with my tech folks and all that to learn what what is the world of prompt engineering looks like. How can I be better at it? The ways to do that. So I think yes, it is here for real. The game is changing from a research perspective. A lot of art people in the team, in creative team, they are fully on it, on board and on it. Uh, brand team has been using it for discussion on idea inside you have in mind you do something something comes alive visually you see something um, like animatic used to happen long before mm-hmm. there's not a much time where you start doing animatics through ai which is that much cost when you see your ad before the you go into production as well right so i think for every single use case the product is out there it's about how much you learn about it how much you know how to use it thank you so much kunal for your time thank you so much always a pleasure talking to you Thank you.